You wanna know how you can make a king cake that looks that good? Well, follow me and I'll show you, friends. Getting started, we're gonna get our water at the right temperatures, about 115 to 120 degrees. Add it to our stand mixer with our yeast and our sugar. Give it a little whisk and a proof. Next, we'll get our milk to the right temperature. And we'll add that into the mixer after the proof with a stick of butter. Turn it on, add in your sugar, your salt, your vanilla, and your eggs. And continue to whisk that for a few minutes just to let that break up the butter and get it into a more manageable size. And next, we'll begin with our addition of our five cups of flour. We wanna add it in a one cup at a time just to let it do its thing and just be patient the dough is going to look super wet and that's okay that's what we want you just need to work with this in its own capacity for what it is and give it time for a little bit of a scrape down here and there we get the mixer started back up and we'll let it go now at about medium and it's going to do this for about eight minutes and that's where we're going to develop our nice gluten scrape down your bowl again and heavily flour your board we're looking to get a nice coverage here. And yes, the dough will be wet and that's okay. You're gonna add a couple additions of flour here which ends up totaling to be about one to one and a half cups. And again, we don't wanna overdo the flour here. We want it to be just the right amount so that the final product isn't too dry or too heavy. So use your bench scraper if you have one. That kinda helps you get the flour incorporated a little easier and you can scrape up any dough that's stuck down. And after that, we're going to spray down our mixing bowl again or whatever bowl you have with a little bit of oil and then pop in your dough and we're going to cover it and let it sit for two hours, which is imperative to help proof the dough. Make sure you place it in a warm space. Next, we're going to take our melted butter here for the filling and add in our cinnamon and our cocoa powder. And the purpose for doing it in this order is that cinnamon and chocolate tend to integrate better with a fat like butter. So we'll get those whisked in we'll add in our cup of caramelized sugar, which if you wanna know how you make that, let me know in the comments and I'll show you how that process works in a later video. And then we'll add in our flour after that. That's gonna help give us a nice crumb texture. You really have to work this in, just be patient. It takes a few minutes. I sped it up so you didn't have to watch that whole process, but we really wanna make sure you get everything incorporated well. And as you see here, we have our dough. It's nicely proofed. It's probably tripled in capacity almost. And what I'm doing here is I'm weighing it out because I want to know how much the total mass is so I can divide that by two. I'm doing the same thing with the filling because this makes two king cakes. We want perfectly distributed amounts of dough and filling. And here's where I would have said, they see me roll in, except that would have been really weird because I'm 43 and yeah. We're going to take our dough here and flatten it out into a rectangle. We really want to get it to be about... 12 by 16, so you know, 12 tall by 16 wide, something like that. And once you get that done, we're gonna start adding in our filling and we wanna add um, the filling in so that it forms about a one inch border on all sides roughly. You know, if you have a little overlap, don't worry about it, it's fine, it's not the end of the world, right? Just do your best, get it smoothed out. And we're gonna treat this like a cinnamon roll. We're gonna roll this up and the purpose of doing that is it's gonna help us create this nice swirled texture on the inside but also has a very beautiful presentation so now what i'm doing here is i'm pinching the the dough together so that it forms a seam and then we're going to take it and twist it into like a rope braid and then we're going to take the two ends and join them together to form an oval shape and we'll want to put that on a sheet pan that's lined with parchment paper reshape if needed and then we're going to cover these with a tea towel for each one so they double in size next we'll make an egg wash with one egg and two tablespoons of milk and we'll continue whisking very thoroughly while we add our milk next we're going to take the tea towels off and we're going to liberally coat the entire king cake from top to bottom almost with the egg wash be as thorough as you can, get in every nook and cranny that you possibly can get to. It just takes a little bit of time and you'll repeat the process for the second king cake as well prior to these going into the oven. And speaking of the oven, we wanna make sure that it is preheated at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and very creepily put both king cakes into the oven and give an awkward thumbs up because hey, why not be a big chungus? As you can see, we've got one king cake that looks really nicely brown, but the other is not there. So I pulled the one out, just to give it a little turn to move it up. And we want to temp these until they're at 190 degrees, roughly, maybe 195. 
The reason for that is they can overcook and dry out internally. And be sure to let them cool completely before making the frosting. Speaking of frosting, we want to double sift our powdered sugar here. If you do that and take the time, you reduce almost 98% of your clumps and you're gonna add your butter, then your vanilla and your lemon juice and your milk. And we wanna get this nice and whisked up. And as you can see here, I kind of realized it's a little too thick, so I added an additional tablespoon of milk throughout the whole process. And by the time it's all mixed up, we're going to take our king cakes, we'll do one at a time, obviously, um, and drizzle your frosting all around it. Um, this may be a little more or less traditional, but this is what I wanted to do, because some traditions don't always have to be maintained, but what does have to be maintained is traditional Mardi Gras colors, which are gold, green, and purple. Repeat the process across the whole cake with your sprinkles, because we don't want to piss off everybody, right? I mean, especially New Orleanites. So now we got my little daughter Finley here helping us and we're going to keep on repeating that same color pattern, gold, green, and purple throughout this entire uh, king cake that she's helping me decorate. Now I'm going to use my King Sean chef knife to cut through this lovely little king cake here so you can see this beautiful chocolate swirl pattern. And we'll just take a bite and see how it turned out. Yummy! Let's take a little taster rooney and see how we did. And let you know. I'm having a moment. Mm. Cause son of a biscuit, that's good. Take a little nibble and tell the people at home what, what you think about it. Creamy and chocolatey and soft and chewy. That's what I think about it. You should try making this. Don't forget to share, share it with friends and family. Like and subscribe.